Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am C. Shilpa Surana and in today's video we are going to talk about the upcoming IPO which is of Rolex Rings Limited. So if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe my channel so that you can stay tuned to such content and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. In today's video, we will not only talk about various aspects of Rolex Rings Limited, but I will also tell which IPO I would prefer that is Rolex Rings Limited or Glenmark Life Sciences which went live today. So stay tuned to this video till the end so that you can also determine which IPO I am planning to subscribe for. So let's begin. Now let's talk about the company first. Rolex Ring was incorporated in 2003 and it is one of the top 5 forging companies in India. Top 5 does not mean it is top 5 from uh, market share perspective or revenue perspective. It is actually top 5 from installed capacity perspective as is mentioned in red herring prospectors. Okay. Now what does this forging mean? So it is the manufacturer of these forgings. These are stainless steel forgings which this company produces and uh, it is uh, one of the top 5 forging companies. Alright. Now apart from that it also manufactures machine bearing rings. So these are the machine bearing rings which it produces and other automotive components which are used in vehicles uh, like two wheelers, passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles, etc. Also, these products are used in industrial machineries, uh, wind turbines, railways, and other segments. All right. Now, in FI21, if you see how the revenue was generated for Rolex ring from sale of the products, then we can see that product wise, 60% of its revenue was from sale of these bearing rings and 40% was from other automotive components all right and if you see geographical distribution wise 56% of its revenue was generated from exports and 44% was from domestic sales now having said that as it caters to both international and domestic markets its customer base majorly includes leading bearing manufacturing companies tire one suppliers of global auto companies as well as equipment manufacturers all right now as of today it has three manufacturing units and all the three are in Rajkot. Now the customer base of Rolex rings include 60 customers which are spanned across 17 countries like India, USA, European countries like Germany, France, Italy etc. All right. Also, one key thing to note here is that out of the 10 largest customers of the company, 70% of it, that is like 7 customers, have been with this company for a decade, which is one of the good thing. Now, coming to the peers of this company, you know, Ramakrishna Forgings Limited, MM Forgings Limited, Bharat Forge Limited, etc. So, these are the peers of this company. Coming to the financials of the company, if you see the total assets has increased from 31st March 19 to 31st March 2021. However, the total revenue of this company has decreased year on year. So, in March 20, it was lesser than March 19 and in March 21, it was far lesser than March 20. Alright. So, there has been constant decrease or decline in revenue. Now, one more key thing to note here is that uh, like we have seen decline in Rolex Wings Limited when I was seeing the PNL statement of its competitors like MM Forgings and Bharat Forge Limited, even they had seen decline as compared to March 20 figures. Okay, so even their revenue has declined. But in the March quarter specifically, I was seeing that the revenue started increasing. All right. Now, one important thing or one anomaly I can say that you can see is that although the revenue has decreased from March 19 to March 21, but if you see the profit figures, it has increased from 590 million to 869.55 million. Okay. So the profit figures has increased and I was trying to introspect that why the same thing has happened. So when I saw the PNL for March 31, I came to uh, two important factors which were contributing to the jump were first thing there was an increase in inventory. So for those who don't know how increase in inventory can lead to, you know, increase in profit, then just a brief thing that I can say is that when there is an increase in closing stock of a company that have a positive impact on the gross profit or net profit of that company. Okay, so an increase in closing stock can lead to increase in the gross profit. Okay, this was one of the factor 
for this company also and apart from that there was a deferred tax asset which was created which was resulting again having a positive impact on profit after taxes okay now this was about the financials so overall i didn't find the financials that lucrative to be honest now coming to the strength of this company like we have seen it is among the top 5 forging companies in india that was one thing apart from that it is having strong manufacturing capabilities in the sense of economies of scale because it is having three plants and it is able to produce voluminous quantities it is enjoying economies of scale one thing and also it is having location advantage because it is situated in rajkot so it has easy accessible market to north west and south also uh, the kandla port is near to rajkot so they have the location advantage for their distribution also okay another one a key strength of this company is it has comprehensive product portfolio so comprehensive in the sense that it manufactures steel bearings weighing from 0.01 kilograms to 163 kilograms so you can see the wide ambit right and also the inner diameters can be from 25 milliliters to 900 milliliters so it is having a wide product portfolio and they do customization as per their customer requirement so this is one of the key strength that they had mentioned also it has uh, geographically diversified revenue base because we had earlier also seen that 56% of its revenue is coming from exports so even that is one of the strength that it is not only dependent on domestic market but have captured uh, the global markets as such all right now coming to the risk of this company now one of the key risk for this company was the default in repayment of certain loans and it has undergone cdr that is corporate debt restructuring all right so that is one of the key risk for this company so now another one key risk that this company faces is its high dependence on automotive sector in various countries or various regions so any adverse impact on this automotive sector can lead to impact on this company all right further the next risk is covid related which is not just specific to this company or this industry but is a risk which is applicable for the whole economy so any further lockdown or the third wave can have impact on this company's profitability also so another one risk that this company is having is that its top 10 customer accounts for majority of the revenue so any loss from this top 10 customer customers would again severely impact its top line or the revenue base all right further uh, these are the some of the key risks that i felt were important to be highlighted but there are a lot of other risks which are mentioned in rhp and you can go through the same as well now coming to the ipo details so this ipo is going live tomorrow and it will be open till 30th of june uh the price band is between 880 to 900 rupees per share so one market lot is basically 16 shares and you have to apply for minimum one lot if you are applying for this ipo so minimum you have to apply for 16 shares and if you take like the near about total investment that you will be doing if you apply in this ipo it will be somewhere between 14000 and 15000 all right now if the ipo is successful this company will get listed on both bse and nse the issue size is of 7 31 crore out of the 731 crore 675 crore is offer for sale and only 56 crore is the fresh issue by the company so all this 675 crore is going to go to promoters all right and this 56 crore will be used by the company for which purpose as per rhp it is for long term capital requirements and for other general corporate purposes all right so again this is one of the point that again which makes me unhappy because the amount which will be available with the company for its own growth will be only 56 crore all right now coming to the valuation aspect even at the higher price band that is of 900 the pe comes around 24 okay and whereas if you see the pe of the peers currently ramakrishna is at 35 mm forgings is at 37 bharat forge is at 165.36 so compared to its peer it's cheaply valued also if you see pe of this industry it's 32.9 and compared to industry also this company is cheaply valued okay so valuation wise yes it's attractive okay now coming to gray market premium now uh, currently when i was checking the gray market pre- premium for this company was around 
420s now coming to conclusions for this ipo okay so if you say financials wise i will say it was not so attractive for me because the growth seemed to be missing for this company okay also the company had defaulted in repaying of its loan in the past and has undergone cdr okay so that's another one setback which i feel makes me uncomfortable okay and uh, valuation wise yes the company is attractive because it is valued cheaply as compared to its peer so what do we conclude now so like we have seen the financials not so attractive valuation yes attractive so what i am presuming is that listing gains can be there considering the high market sentiments which is very clear from the gray market premium but this should be rechecked once the subscription starts maybe on day 2 and day 3 i feel that listing gains can be there okay considering the high mark if the high market sentiments continues but for long term investors i would say it will be worthy to watch for future performance and then take any decision so now come the most awaited question that which ipo i am going to apply that is Uh, glenmark life sciences or rolex ring so i hope after this video you are able to conclude that my inclination towards rolex rings is not that much so yes uh, i am planning to apply for glenmark life sciences of course on day 3 only i'll decide it but uh, yeah that that's on my radar right now just don't take this decision of applying in that company because i have said so go through the red herring prospectus because it carries in detail information about that company also if you have not seen my previous video which is on glenmark life sciences ipo review do check that out to determine that why i am saying so okay so i'll give you the link in the description box below and on the i card do check it out now and further that's all from my side guys see you in the next video if you like the content don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed i see lot of people are watching the videos but those are the ones who have not subscribed it yet so please subscribe for such interesting content in the future also so i'll see you in my next video till then stay home stay safe bye